just kind of become an advertising game. Uh, who can tell the biggest lie? How many of us are gullible enough to believe it? We should be insulted. We should not buy those batteries because they've said that, because they've lied so boldly and they've treated us like we're morons. Before we get too deep into the story, you're probably wondering who this kook in a lab coat is. This is Jetman Joe, also known as MCS Guy on RC Groups. He's widely known as a trusted battery expert who countless people turn to when buying packs to figure out if they're going to get a good deal or not. And trust us, price is more of an indicator of a poorly designed pack and not the opposite, but more on that later. Joe's background is extensive, and as a result, he's built the trust of many of us on RC groups. My background is process control systems engineering for DuPont, Shell Oil, Chevron, and I built a lot of custom robotics for the aerospace industry and a lot of the machines that went into building the 787 Dreamliner for Boeing. So what gets a guy to dedicate a serious amount of time and money into testing packs? I've said it since the day I opened the thread. Thunder Power, I expected a lot. In 2012, I had a $7,000 uh, turbine conversion. Version. I was drawing about 180 amps and I used their 6600 packs, which 65C were theoretically supposed to handle twice that. Whoa, hang on. Pause. Jargon. C rating. Real quick, let's define that. It's an imaginary number used more as a marketing tool than to convey any engineering data. It's really been abused to the point where it doesn't really mean anything, but in actuality, real C determines the level of voltage a battery will hold under a given load. One additional thing Joe noted to us regarding battery capacity and its relation to C ratings is that usable milliamp is a variable which depends upon the real C rating of the battery. He says that this is a fundamental concept to understanding LiPos. Okay, back to his 65C pack from Thunder Power. It didn't make it around one loop and it crashed in the field and totaled it out. But, you know, that kind of got me really into it in a serious way, saying, well, what's going on with these batteries? And if I'm having these kinds of problems, what kind of problems are other guys having? And then when I started doing testing, I realized that the numbers were bogus. I'll pick on Thunder Power. They deserve it. been testing them for years, and they're still always amongst the worst. They had a connector between the two halves of their 6S pack that would connect the two 3S packs together. And it was a 4-millimeter connector. Under continuous use at 32C, it melted. It off. It's clear that Thunder Power failed Joe's test, but what makes a light bulb good or bad? C rating has been used as an indicator, but it's just one of four. It doesn't stand alone. It stands with the load. It stands with you know the voltage. It stands with the temperature rise of the pack. And then C is kind of like the fourth parameter that determines how a pack's going to perform. So it's just one of the factors that defines what you can expect from a battery. And what you see on the label has nothing to do at all with what you're actually going to get when you buy the battery. Which is kind of disappointing because for years I've been sharing that and proving it over and over and over again. But people still will buy a pack that's higher rated C on the label than one that's lower rated even if the numbers show the lower rated pack does better. The core data acquisition routines that I pulled into the software that I used to test batteries are the same routines that were developed when I built the FCU for Boeing. The field control unit is a device that senses resistance feedback for the pilot's yoke on fly-by-wire so he gets a sense of his stabilizer and back so that it feels like he's actually attached to something. Well, that's a certified testing device requirement for FAA. It's one thing to bump up this imaginary number that C rating has become to keep your company afloat, but some manufacturers are selling a clapped out Civic and calling it a Porsche. Maxamps is just one company that came to Joe's mind. I just bought their 250, 5200 milliamp hour pack, 170C max amps. Well, I tried them three years in a row. They're 5250, the 120C pack, $200, $250. It was a 12C battery. They burned up at 20C. They had no voltage maintenance at all. It was terrible. You know, I called them about it. They said, oh yeah, well, we know our C's are mar marketing number, blah, blah. I even sent a couple back. They were so bad. And I don't normally do that. I figure when I test them, I eat them. That's the way it is. But with Maxamp, they were so bad, I sent them back. I blacklisted them. But this year, I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm bringing them in. I'm giving them another shot. But the point is, they get away with that kind of battery because most people don't push them. They don't see it. Joe ended up giving them another shot with their 5200, 170C, $240 pack recently, which is expected to do significantly better than his previous tests. You can be the judge. Is it worth twice the price of the rest? 
For more information, please check out Joe's thread, which can be found in the description below. Since C rating is an arbitrary number manufacturers created, you might be wondering what makes Joe's testing any different. Joe's process is extremely thorough. Batteries are ranked based on the root mean square, aka RMS value, of the time their voltage remains above 3.7 volts a cell and 3.6 volts a cell while under test load. High C batteries can maintain a higher voltage under load than low C batteries. High voltage levels provide higher prop and EDF RPM, which then creates more thrust. Joe coined the term LiPo power band, or LPB, which he uses to measure how one battery compares to another in its ability to maintain this voltage while being used to power a plane or EDF. It's a value calculated by tracking how long a battery's voltage remains above 3.7 volts a cell while being operated at a calibrated or commonly used amp discharge rate. This calculation also requires tracking how long the battery remains above 3.6 volts a cell during this discharge load. By using these two times, the seconds to fall to 3.6 volts and 3.7 volts, it's possible to apply a common mathematical formula to determine which are the better batteries for maintaining thrust and speed while flying. We then asked Joe if RC battery manufacturers are intentionally deceiving customers. His response might surprise you. They have to to survive. It's not their fault, it's our fault. It's We believe the lie, everybody psychologically does it. I've seen it in myself. If I can see a label that's a little bit more than the other label and I'm competing, you know, I'm thinking about two packs and there's no compelling reason to do one over the other on price or reputation or whatever, I tend to lean to the one with the higher label. So they're responding to market conditions. Now they've created it and I totally blame Thunder Power. They were the first to deal in, you know, sea inflation. They kept pumping up their numbers to an artificial level back over a decade ago, and everybody got on board, and now it's just, it's a joke. It's just kind of become an advertising game. Uh, who can tell the biggest lie, and how many of us are gullible enough to believe it? So they figure if you're gullible about C, you'll be real gullible on price. Because think about it, we tend to equate value with price. They trade on the ignorance of people who think that they pay a high price, they get a good pack. It doesn't stop there either. Joe isn't alone in battery testing on the internet, and some manufacturers have gone to great lengths to silent testing. There have been companies, uh, and I won't name the companies, but on YouTube, battery testers have said disparaging things about certain brands that are, might be overpriced and underperformed. I've mentioned their names, and I won't mention their name again, but they have contacted and intimidated those guys, and one in particular that I know of, where you know they had the president of the corporation or the company of the battery manufacturer call them and say, we're gonna get our attorneys involved if you don't you know, lighten up a little bit. I saw the YouTube, and the guy wasn't doing scientific testing. He was doing kind of opinion-based testing based on what he saw. And what he saw, it was indicative that this battery was overpriced for what the customer was getting, but he couldn't prove it. Uh, and that's why I'm very careful on what I do. I keep records. Remember earlier how we mentioned the relationship between price and quality, or lack thereof? It's my biggest bugaboo. There is no difference in quality on LiPos based on price. None, zero, nada, get it out of your mind. The worst batteries in the world on quality were the most expensive, and that's the max apps. The second worst batteries in the world they're the second most expensive are the stinking Thunder Power. They offer nothing more Thunder Power than your $50 or $60 uh, Liperia or some of the even the, the $55 SMC that he released last year was better in performance and in every way than the $165 to $190 Rampage ADC. Max Amps did, however, make some changes recently for the better that other manufacturers like Thunder Power should follow when listing their packs online. I went back into their website today, in fact. Their 170 pack that I just ordered, 170C, they have a spec sheet now, which is the way all batteries should be sold. And on their spec sheet, they admit it's a 45C continuous discharge pack. I think it was, in their case, 232 volts or something. So now that's honest, you know, because you can probably do that on that battery if it's any good, and I will find out. So what packs are worth buying then? But I've been seeing a, a rise in the caliber of packs starting in 2017 and had to do with uh, Richard was working he now owns rcbatteries.com Liberia he was working for Hobby King and he was one of the product specialists for battery and they introduced the graphene 2017 and everybody had them uh, 2018 and that was the first battery that you could actually load to 50c you know 250 amps or whatever and it wouldn't get hot 
The Liperior brand from RCBattery.com isn't the only manufacturer making good packs though, and SMC has also been a front runner along with these others. And again, I don't want to give them a plug, but I got to be honest, a Grey Pal, who private labels Gen Z's tattoo of their particular lines, Admiral, Spectrum, and you know, a half a dozen others, Buddy RC on the, on the Glacier. Uh, those are all ta uh, uh, Grey Pal, and they have the newest and the best equipment. Their batteries cell matching is unsurpassed. I mean, they're the, sta they're the standard. But what they haven't done until recently is give a hoot about real C rating. They've been making a good battery, but they're, they were going after the, you know, good enough market. Let's face it, most people fly 20C, 25C, so it's good enough. And they were private labeling everybody that wanted to hang a shingle out and sell lipos, they would give them a label. I like SMC, but I used to like Denoji, and I used to like Revo. And when I start getting bad packs, I throw them under the bus because I'm into the batteries. Like I told one guy when I started giving negative reviews on his packs, I go, I'm a battery tester before I'm your friend. Uh, and that's just the way that I feel about it. So I'll brag about SMC because for three years running, they have been the best thing out there. And it's because they were involved in drag racing, you know, the car packs. And so that first 10 seconds, they live or die by. And every cycle is timed with the stopwatch. So nobody got away with anything like a lot of these airplane manufacturers. We noticed through years of Joe's testing that he doesn't really touch smaller packs. Here is the reasoning behind this. I test the large packs because when I started there was a lot of people testing the small packs. It's not that hard to test small packs. And generally speaking, small packs, the uses is not that demanding. Hobby King brands, at least until recently, were the batteries we saw the most at our flying fields. They came at a great price point and usually would get the job more than done. Recently, however, there's been a shift that you should be aware of. Now, for a while, Hobby King really got in there and started selling some good batteries since 2017-18. And it wasn't until last year where they reverted to crap chemistry across the line. They, it's like they went from the top 10, bottom third in one year. But before that, they were selling a good product at a reasonable price, uh, similar to Admiral. They sell a good product at a reasonable price that matched their planes. While we had Joe, we asked him about some general misconceptions we hear at the field regarding batteries. The first of which is the common argument that storage charging doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is if you don't store your batteries right, they will puff prematurely. That's a fact. Every, you know, it doesn't matter what you read, where you go, it's just the design, the nature of the beast. They outgas, they develop gas, and once the gas starts going and things decay, every time you charge your battery up, it's starting to decay. Every time you discharge it, it decays. It's, it's fuel in the tank. Materials inside are being destroyed. That's the process of discharging. It destroys some of the material. When you store a pack properly, it becomes more benign. You know, ideally, if you want a pack to be totally safe, you discharge it to 3.7 volts per cell. Technically, you could drive a nail through it and it wouldn't flame up. Some, like Ben, will still refuse to storage charge their packs because they're lazy, and that's fine if you enjoy burning money. But there's another way you can elongate the lifespan on your LiPo that even the lazy can partake in. I do believe sincerely that storage is important but just as important as temperature uh, keeping your packs cool 60 degrees 40 you know 40 50 60 degrees when storage is just as important in some cases as storage is arguable but i think it takes two factors to give you the best long-term shelf life is temperature control and and storage voltage i believe is very important Joe did tell us after his interview that ultimately there is no secret sauce that makes a lipo last longer. It's all about temp rise during use. The only way the overpriced bad pack will last longer than the properly priced high performing pack is if the high performing pack operates hotter. And generally, they don't. So what about charging? Is 2C really damaging your packs? Everything we do destroys our battery. That's the way to understand it. The only question you can answer is you're going to destroy it more or less. You get a benefit from it. If you really want to have your batteries last the longest amount of time, you're going to charge them at 0.5C. If you really want your battery to last the longest amount of time, you're going to charge them up to 4.1 volts per cell, not 4.2. That's what Tesla does. Essentially, the idea behind it is that you baby them, they last longer. Now, I charge mine at 2C, but I, there's a caveat. If I'm below 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I will not charge them at 2C because one of the most destructive things you can do is charge a cold battery 
fast. That will suck the life out of it. Just like when you try to, to run a cold battery, theoretically a battery shouldn't be ran at its whatever its real C is until about 86 degrees F in that range there. Anything less than that, you're sucking life out of it. Now, not a lot, you know, it's all, it's kind of we're nibbling it to death on the things we do or don't do. Charging a pack fast is okay if it's warm, in my opinion, but never over 2C. I would never do it over 2C. I think that's penny wise pound foolish. We're all familiar with the dreaded puffing of our batteries, but we wanted to know more about the science behind it. Puffing, you know, obviously temperature is the worst one because as soon as your pack starts outgassing inside, it fills up the pouch. You know, you can split your seams and that's how you get flames because uh, the seams of the pouch are your weak point. But you also can break down the cathode. You have basically a film between your anode and cathode. It's, it's, there's a layer. Your first charge that develops this layer, it's a separator, it's just a few micron thick. Basically, that over time gets thicker and it increases the internal IR of a pack. And it puts the heat inside, increases as the internal IR goes up, and as you're running it at the same 100 amps, it's generating more heat inside. And at some point, you start destroying the lithium Create out, you know, creating an outgassing situation, which generates puffing. We can't thank Joe enough for taking the time to meet with us, along with all the work he's doing behind the scenes, promoting a positive change in the battery industry. This year alone, he spent over $7,000 on packs to test for the community. For more details on his testing process, results, and everything else battery related, please check out his RC Groups thread, which is linked down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you're feeling like driving some nails through your $100 packs, and maybe even consider subscribing if you think we should scan the RC battery industry back. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll catch you next week with a new upload.